Bobby for us as well. Well, president and CEO of the National Newspaper Publishers Association, Benjamin Chavez Jr., wrote a recent op-ed describing the impacts of Assembly Bill 5, specifically on minority independent contractors, entrepreneurs, journalists, and rideshare drivers. He joins us now with more on that discussion. Good morning to you, Benjamin. Thank you. Good morning. So this is this is really an interesting conversation because uh, you you say in your op-ed that in your view the proposed California law Assembly Bill 5 authored by Lorena Gonzalez here in San Diego is unconstitutional and racist. Can you explain why? Yes, because it has a disproportionate impact on people of color. Uh, African Americans, Latino, Latinx, uh, Asian Americans uh, who are independent contractors that drive for Uber and Lyft and other ride share companies. These are entrepreneurs. That's their only means of income. And for Proposition 5, we'll, we'll force them out of work rather than to put them in work. Uh, we should be, uh, that's why I support Proposition 22, uh, which is now being proposed to rectify what Assembly Bill 5 has done. I, I think that uh, as everybody's struggling to overcome COVID-19, we should be trying to get more people in the economy and not blocking people from working. These are hardworking people who drive, who and then not only for the drivers, but for the riders. There are a lot of people in our communities that don't have cars, don't have transportation, and they depend on Uber and Lyft to get to their employment or take their kids to school. So I think that Assembly Bill 5 was not well thought out. I'm sure that uh, the sponsor of Assembly Bill 5 had good intentions, but as I say in the op-ed, sometimes good intentions can lead to bad consequences. Well, it makes you wonder the political motivations and the dialogue that's happening, because obviously we know uh, racial tensions are high. This, uh, this systemic racism is a, is a hot topic right now yes. in our country. And it seems as though it's being uh, used in, uh, as, as political weaponry instead of really working to, to get the job done and make lives better uh, for people in minority communities. I wonder, have you had any contact uh, with the, the law? lawmakers in California who are supporting this bill who maybe don't understand the impacts or simply ignoring the impacts of this law to to further a, a political motive? Thank you. It's a very good question. One of the reasons why I wrote the op-ed was to capture their attention because a lot of people when they get up to Sacramento and the state legislature they have tunnel vision. They don't uh, consult their constituencies. I, before passing uh, Assembly Bill 5 they should at least talk to the people who are going to be impacted by this. Again, I think um, Representative Gonzalez probably had good intentions, but the consequences are going to be devastating. Uh, and part of systemic racism is keeping people out of um, gainful employment. It's keeping people uh, discriminatory practices. So I think Assembly Bill 5, for a whole lot of reasons, uh, should not be uh, California law. And I hope uh, people in this election will vote uh, Proposition 22 to rectify uh, the bad impact of Assembly Bill 5. I have to push back just a little bit because it would seem as though you'd have to be under a rock if you're uh, one of the people supporting this bill that doesn't see the impacts that it's having on some of the most vulnerable communities. I mean, we've had yes. lawsuits, we've had uh, exemptions being made for certain amounts uh, or certain groups, certain working groups. I mean, yes. quite quite frankly, there, there's no way that they're not aware of, of the impacts that it's having negatively. Are, are they just simply ignoring it or is there something that they think might be outweighing what, what could be negatively affecting some of our our hardest hit communities? Well, what, what, what normally happens with, with politicians and um, this is unfortunate, uh, Laura, the thing is that they feel that they can pass these bills and the, the most vulnerable don't have the political clout to challenge them. That's what's happening. But I think they underestimated the resolve of these drivers, these riders, uh, that's why I entitled uh, the op-ed, Black Riders Matter, Black Drivers Matter, Black Lives Matter. But, but when we say that, we're just not only talking about black people, we're talking about Latinos, we're talking about Asians, all people of color who ought to be gainfully employed. And if you have somebody that wants to use their time to drive their vehicle, to help other people that need to be taken places, that's part of participating in the American economy. I think our democracy is not going well if we have these racially exclusive and racially targeted uh, public policies. That's why Assembly Bill 5 should be withdrawn, should be overturned, and I hope everybody will vote for Proposition 22.
Yeah. I, are you in California, Benjamin? I, I, I mean, uh, your your resume is so impressive. I wish we had time to go through it and explain to people the, the way you've dedicated your life. Uh, well, thank you. I've been involved in civil rights for a long time. I have 27 papers uh, in California, one in San Diego, the uh, San Diego Viewpoint. Uh, is one of our uh, African-American-owned newspapers, as well as uh, the Los Angeles Sentinel, the LA Watch Time, the Wave newspaper, our uh, uh, journal, uh, the San Sacramento Observer. We have a lot of papers, the uh, Oakland uh, Post. We have a lot of papers throughout California. So yeah, I'm in and out of California a lot. And I was quite frankly, I was a little alarmed that while we have this uh, pandemic, COVID-19, and then uh, almost an epidemic of systemic racism that somebody would even author a bill like uh, Assembly uh, Bill 5. So I think, you know, I'm, I'm not going to cast dispersions on the sponsors, but now that we've got their attention, I think they should withdraw this bill. Uh, I'm going to also talk to government, Governor Newsom about it. I think that we don't need to do anything that's racially discriminatory. Not, not in 2020, please. All right, Benjamin Chavez Jr., thank you so much for your time this morning. Your perspective, certainly an important one. And uh, I understand we have a, a mutual friend at Black News Channel, Gary Wardlaw, so say hi oh, for yes. me next time. I certainly will. I'll <laughs> tell Gary that we talk. Thank you. Absolutely. Take care, Benjamin. Thank you. Thank you.